the heart of the Northern California mountains, marijuana growing season is underway. You're growing in your front yard. Oh, yeah. There's nothing more American than a man taking his piece of ground and producing a product that people want. This is the Emerald Triangle. I mean, look at the size of that. That looks like a orange orchard. Ground zero for a multi-billion dollar marijuana industry. Originally comprised of three counties covering 10,000 square miles, it's now growing out of control, and rebels are staking their claim. You can use those feet to walk off this property anytime you feel like it. You get off They stand to make millions. It's just a business that can't fail. Or be locked up for years. We have the medical marijuana laws, but for the people who are making profit off of it, we have to stop it. You can haul one, you can haul a hundred. I got one that's on target. It's a decades-old battle between cops, dealers, and growers using 21st century science to make the most powerful weed on earth. Arguably, I just committed a felony. This is the story about America at war with itself. Every time one of those plants falls, that's money that we don't get. It is a problem at epidemic proportions. Yeah, I'm breaking the law on TV. I've got the target off to our left. So what? This is weed country. We will never stop this. Ever. It is one of the most forbidding, remote, and notorious places on Earth. Once confined to three small counties in Northern California, it is expanding every year, in every direction. Here, deep in the forest of what is called the Emerald Triangle, the marijuana growing season Ten seconds. is about to begin. There we go. Stuff. Why was it so important to start moving the light back? I wanted to fool these plants into a schedule of a cycle that says flower. I'm Mike Boot. My father was a police officer. Mmm, I love the smell of that right there. My brother's a police officer. I was a jet engine mechanic on F-4 Phantoms in the Air Force. I've owned my own trucks, hauled logs, been an axe man. And now, I grow weed. You know, we got a lot of plants to sink, so uh, we'll go gather up Tony and get busy. It's June 1st. Mike and Tawny Booten are moving their plants from their indoor greenhouses out into the open. Over the next five months, an estimated $4.5 billion worth of marijuana will be grown and harvested in the Emerald Triangle. I gotta tell you, Mrs. Booten, these are some of the nicest plants. Growers all throughout the area are staking their claim. Tawny is my wife. She loves marijuana the same as I do. She's really the grower. These are my babies. I love my girls. I get really heartbroken when something happens to them. You missed a couple spots. Growing marijuana is more than just sinking plants and keeping them watered. Today's a big day because today's like race day. What we do today determines what we're going to get in quantity at the end of the year. And then, of course, everything that goes wrong just comes out of our wages. So you can't win the championship today. But you can lose it. Growers like Booten can earn a year's salary in a single summer. With that kind of reward comes huge risk. Planting marijuana outdoors in the full sun is putting a bullseye on your back. Some of these counties have it in their head that marijuana is illegal, that's all there is to it. Prove it to the judge. So one of the things that we're doing today by putting these plants in the ground, we're hoisting the flag of civil disobedience. It's going to be out there for the DEA to see. It's going to be out there for the Sheriff's Department to see. It's going to be out there for any marijuana thieves. All the forces that could take us down are at play every day from today on. In a separate corner of the Emerald Triangle, another marijuana season is just beginning. 
Matt Thompson is training his men in how to sneak up on and overtake illegal marijuana farms. Up! Up! You know, a large part of the training we do early in the year is our tactical movements through the woods, trying to be quiet and we're watching out for each other. And it, it does pay off, and it's paid off for as many years as we've done it because we've never lost anybody. And that's why we do it. We don't want to lose anybody. The members of the Jackson County SWAT team regularly encounter armed growers willing to protect their money and their crop. Today, Thompson is training his men to stay alive. How long did you guys hold up here before you moved in? Five minutes. Okay. For over half of his life, Thompson has been a major force in taking down pot growers all around the Emerald Triangle. You guys want to run through one more time? Right, got your right. Are we going to save the world by doing what we're doing? No, we're not. But on the flip side of that, if we can save one person from getting hooked on drugs or one person from smoking a bowl and getting out in a, in a car and driving and killing somebody, then it's all worth it. The blood meal we do three cups, right? Three cups. Yeah, that's three. For Nate Morris and his business partner, Eric Honor, day one of the growing season means starting from scratch with a bag of soil. Start mixing. Over the next few months, Nate's finely calibrated soil mixture will produce a very powerful strain of marijuana. We call this mix, we actually call it the mix. The mix. These ingredients are what bring out the full flavors, it's what produces the higher yield. If we had intellectual property, it would be that soil. My name's Nathaniel Morris. I started growing pot when I was 14 years old. At that point, I already knew I was a biology geek, and I just applied my love of science to my love of growing pot. That started me off as a mad scientist. The science that we're doing here, you know, never been done before. Nate believes his marijuana has the power to relieve several ailments. When you say cannabis is the cure for cancer, you sound like an idiot. The fact is, medical cannabis is capable of sending cancerous tumors into remission. Nate plans to turn his weed into a medical game changer. Any other flower that had these medical properties would be like treated as the greatest discovery to happen in a century. And this one, you know, it's a laugh line. In the eyes of the government, Nate is a felon committing a crime. Somebody with over 100 plants is looking at five years. You got over 1,000 plants, you're looking at 40 years which is just an insane punishment for, you know, a garden of flowers. But that's the way it is. But to some, medical marijuana is a scam. My name is Mike Gilley. I'm commander of the marijuana team of Siskiyou County. I've been doing law enforcement here for 27 years. On opening day of the marijuana season, Gilly's SWAT team is making a drug bust in a town called Weed. Named after the timber tycoon, Abner Weed, the town of roughly 3,000 is quickly becoming known for its other namesake, and Gilly can't stand it. It makes me mad that we've taken this law, and now we are using it as a front to use an illegal substance. It hits a raw nerve with me. If I can be part of squashing that, then... That makes me very happy. Gilly works for this guy. I am Sheriff John Lopey, Sheriff Coroner of Siskiyou County, California. Lopey is one of the most highly decorated cops in all of California. But right now, he has his hands full. Siskiyou County right now, we're deluged with a lot of drug-related problems. Provisions of law in California provide for the legal possession of marijuana for so-called uh, medicinal purposes. Many people are growing more marijuana than is permissible. Kids are getting a hold of it, and that's one of my big concerns. It is a problem at epidemic proportions. Contrary to popular belief, marijuana was once grown legally in the United States until 1937, when it was federally outlawed. Today, marijuana is a Schedule One drug in the same category as heroin and crystal meth. 19 states have laws allowing for its medicinal use, and in 2012, both Washington and Colorado voters legalized the plant for recreation. But since it's still a federal crime, for some, there's no easy way to get it. In my pan, in my sack, 
Over the next few days, Mike Booten will deliver six pounds of high-grade marijuana up and down the California coast. Sack it. You have risks that range from law enforcement intervention. How much is legal to carry? Is it even legal to transport? Some jurisdictions will contend no. You get pulled over by one of those and you're going to jail. Am I an outlaw now because I'm at odds with state law, with federal law? I am an outlaw. I've always been an outlaw. But it doesn't mean I'm wrong. I'll see you in a few days, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Every time Booten goes on a run, he is leaving his home exposed to law enforcement raiding him or worse. Things get weirder out here, you know? We just had a home invasion robbery, and the people got murdered, you know, in the process of it. So it's not like it couldn't happen here. I don't like the fact that it's just me and a dog here. You know, a bullet puts my dog down, and then where am I? You know, so it's scary. Come on, buddy. This game is just like the wildebeest migration. You know, you, you got to cross the river with the crocodiles in it. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to catch the crocodiles to sleep right now. Not only does he have to avoid cops, Booten must dodge bandits looking to steal his cash or crop. Throughout the Emerald Triangle, they're known as Rippers. Rippers, they're just lazy mother that's what they are. So you can't be too careful about being ambushed. People have been killed in this county over marijuana. From Zagar, two of them. Every set of headlights is a potential threat. First one's nothing. Second one looked like it could have been law enforcement. That's what I don't like about this. It's uncertainty. A vehicle abruptly pulls out of the darkness. I don't like the looks of that. I just picked up a van behind me. I'm not really sure what this thing's all about. But, uh... Generally speaking, what you do to be a good neighbor on these roads is if you get somebody behind you, you pull over and let them by. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do that, but if it looks like they're going to pull in behind me, then I may have to come up with another plan because I'm not going to get checked tonight. making a night run with six pounds of high-grade marijuana. He faces a felony possession count or being held up by hijackers. Generally speaking, what you do to be a good neighbor on these roads is if you get somebody behind you, you pull over and let them by. But if it looks like they're going to pull in behind me, then I may have to come up with another plan because I'm not going to get checked tonight. I'm looking for something. 